Hi, this is Mike from Boca Film Studios, and today I want to talk all about frame rates. Oh my God, Mike, frame rates. This is such a sexy topic. Thank you so much for doing it. Okay, it's not, I get it. But I will tell you that it is extremely important to understand your frame rates when you are setting up for really any type of filmmaking. Um, I'm gonna be talking mostly about wedding filmmaking because that's what we do at Boca Film Studios, but I want to uh, describe the science behind frame rates so that when you are adjusting things and trying to get certain looks, you're able to achieve that through the science of frame rates. So let's start with this. 24 frames per second is what the majority of all movies are shot in. That is the, the normal motion and motion blur that happens in most filmmaking. It's not going to be the frame rate for you for slow motion, but it's going to be the frame rate for you for anything that is naturally occurring. It looks the most natural to have something shot in 24 frames per second. So the general rule is that you need to set your shutter speed at double your frame rate. So if you wanna set your shutter speed to double your frame rate, you'll realize that there isn't 1 48th of a second in your shutter speed setting. That's okay, do 1 50th, that's what most people do. So if you are shooting anything in 24 frames per second, you're most likely going to be in 1 50th in your shutter speed. So if you're looking for a very natural look, 24 frames per second at 1 50th shutter speed is going to be the right way to do things for you. Now, if you want to do anything in slow motion, you're going to want to change your frame rate. And because you're changing your frame rate, you're also going to have to change your shutter speed. So for example, if you want to do some sort of slow motion, you might consider shooting in 60 frames per second. Now, remember the rule about doubling your shutter speed. So if I'm shooting 60 frames per second, I'm at one over 125 for my shutter speed. And what that does is it's still going to give me two stops of shutter speed for every frame that I am recording. And again, that gives me the ability to slow down my footage to 40% of what 24 frames per second would have given. If you do the math, it comes out to be about 40%. Now you can slow your speed down even further with 120 frames per second or even some cameras that go 240 frames per second and beyond. Now, again, if you are going to shoot in 120 frames per second, your shutter speed is going to have to be one over 250, which again looks awesome, especially if you're shooting outdoors. But you do have to recognize that the higher your shutter speed, the darker your image is going to get. So for me, for the most part, I shoot in 60 frames per second as compared to 120 frames per second, mostly because I still need to make sure that what I'm shooting has um, not been corrupted by super high ISO. It gets really noisy. So 60 frames per second, one over 125 shutter speed is usually what I do for slow motion. So at 60 frames per second, you can slow your footage down to 40% of the original. With 120 frames per second, you can slow it down to 20% of your normal speed footage, which in some cases is kind of cool, but again, you're trying to compromise between how dark your image is gonna look and how slow you really need your footage to look. For me, 60 frames per second is perfect. I don't really need my subjects to be moving slower than that. So that's really the science behind shutter speed. Whatever you're going to do for your frames per second, you just have to set up double for your frames. 24, one over 50, 60, one over 125. And that's pretty much the two settings that I use the most. Now as an added bonus, what I will tell you is that no matter what, when you're setting up a project in the edit, set it up to be 24 frames per second. In fact, that's wrong, it's because it's like 23.96 frames per second, whatever it has there in your, your settings, it's not exactly 24 frames per second, you'll, you'll be able to find it. But the reason you wanna set it up in the 24 frames per second is because when you drop in a clip that is either 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, the playback will be in 24 frames per second but it also gives you the ability to slow it down inside your timeline just perfectly without missing a beat. 
The benefit is that you can play your 60 frames per second footage at 24 frames, or you can slow it down and play it at 60 or 120. To be honest, it's just the best way to do it so that you plug in your 24 frames per second shots, your 60 frames per second shots, your 120 frames per second shots, and nobody knows the difference until you actually physically slow it down. So my advice is to set up all of your projects in your edit as 24 frames per second. It's just gonna give you the most amount of flexibility for what you wanna do inside the edit. Well, I hope this was really helpful to you. I hope that you're able to try something new today, maybe have a better understanding the science behind why we need to choose 24 frames per second or 60 or 120 or whatever, and how to achieve those great slow motion shots by making sure your shutter speed is double your frame rate. Well, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch. I hope that you will consider liking this video and subscribing, following us on this journey as we continue to build our business in wedding and corporate filmmaking. Man, if you have any questions, feel free to ask at any point. We love helping out fellow videographers in any phase that you're in, from beginner to an expert. We love collaborating as well. Thanks so much once again. Hope to see you real soon, and as always, Happy filmmaking.